for tonight in zero four.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the public hearing today, March 1st, 2018, which is beginning now at 4 p.m. regarding the Maine Department of Education's periodic review of the science and technology standards in the Maine learning results. This hearing was advertised on February 5th as a priority notice and shared with an extensive list of stakeholders, as well as major newspapers and news broadcasts throughout the state. It was advertised again on February 26th through priority notice. This hearing will conclude at 6 p.m. My name is Beth Lambert, and I am the coordinator of secondary education and integrated instruction at the Maine Department of Education. I'm joined today by science and technology specialist Shari Templeton, who will be taking notes. As background for this hearing, this is part of a periodic review of the Maine learning results as required under 62 excuse me, 6209, subsection four. The science and technology standards were last reviewed and revised in 2007. The standards review process begins with this initial review of the existing standards. From February 5th until 5 p.m. on March 16th, the Maine Department of Education is collecting public comment on the existing science and technology standards through written comment and these public hearings. At the close of the public comment period, all comments will be given to the Science and Technology Standards Steering Committee, which is composed of content area experts who represent the cultural diversity found in Maine and a range of viewpoints as to the content of the standards. This group will meet and review all the comments submitted and develop a blueprint for the revision of the state science and technology standards. Then this summer, Groups of writing teams representing pre-K through 12 science teachers will meet and revise the current standards. In the fall, once the revisions are complete, there will be another public comment period where the public will have the opportunity to comment on the proposed revisions. The procedure for today's hearing is simple. This is an opportunity for the Department of Education to receive comments regarding the current science and technology standards. This is not a discussion. Anyone with comments will please step up to the podium, sign in on the sheet provided, identify yourself, and then state your comment. This hearing is being live streamed and recorded, so please make sure that you're standing in front of the camera and we can see you. If you have written testimony or comments with you today and would prefer to submit those instead of speaking publicly, please feel free to do so. And even if you do offer public comment today, we'd appreciate having a copy of your testimony if you have it. We'd also appreciate an electronic copy of your comments if possible. We may ask you to clarify with a question or comment. Finally, electronic or written comments may be submitted to Beth Lambert, Maine Department of Education, 23 State House Station, Augusta, Maine, 04333-0023 or emailed to sis.doe at maine.gov until 5 p.m. on March 16th, 2018. Thank you for your interest in the science and technology standards and for joining us here today. Would anyone like to come up and give public comment? You can, yes. Come on up. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks. This, should I just fill in more into details? This is someone else's statement. So I would read that statement. Yep. And then I would introduce yourself and speak okay. about it. So first I'm gonna read this statement from Jacqueline Cuthbert. 
My name is Jacqueline Kupfer, and I'm an USM ETEP pro in the USM ETEP program, getting a master's in teaching and learning. I will soon be certified in 7 through 12 physical science. My teaching experience is brief as of yet, but I feel very strongly about the direction of science education in Maine because I am passionate about providing young Mainers with understanding of the natural world and the process of science that they need to, one, be active and informed citizens, and two, have the option to choose to pursue STEM degrees and careers. On a state level, we need to, need to diversify our STEM workforce to maintain a robust economy, and this starts with public education. Maine Learning Results Guiding Principle E states that all Maine learners should become integrative and informed thinkers who are skilled at using complex reasoning processes to make meaning. To achieve this guiding principle in science, our youth need to be taught using standards that have been developed by the widest reaching, largest community of scientists possible. They need to be doing science rather than solely learning about the laws and theories scientists have developed over time. They need to be challenged to their limits so they can thrive in the higher education setting. This is why I argue that the best thing the state of Maine can do to provide the STEM education our students deserve is to adopt the next generation science standards. Jackie Cuff. And so I'm Brooke Teller. I'm the 2017 Cumberland County Teacher of the Year, and I'm a chemistry teacher at Casco Bay High School in Portland, Maine. I moved to Maine from Connecticut in 2007, and so came in um, when the Maine Learning Results, the um, current Maine Learning Results started. And um, I think it is um, long overdue that we revise these standards and look to the next gen science standards as the, the next standards that are directing our learners in the state of Maine. Um, I think that any organization and looking at the state as an organization, um, revises their goals and missions and the things they want their, for their organization um, far more often than every 10 years. So I think it is high time that we do move towards um, next-gen science standards because of the fact that they are asking our students to do the work of scientists, not just know the facts of science. Um, and so, I'll end there. Hi, my name is Allison Miller. I'm a Brunswick resident, a parent of two young children who will attend public school in the next few years, and an assistant professor of education at Bowdoin College. I have nine years of teaching experience at the middle and high school levels and earned my doctorate in science education from Columbia University, and my scholarship is in the learning sciences. I'm here today on my own behalf and as a representative of the education department at Bowdoin College, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak about the review of the Maine Science and Technology Standards. Specifically, I would like to urge the committee to support the adoption of the next generation science standards. These standards are informed by evidence-based research as outlined in the framework for K through 12 science education a report co-authored uh, by a committee which included educators, cognitive and learning scientists, and policymakers, and published by the National Academy of Sciences. The NGSS are a result of careful collaboration between 26 lead partner states, including Maine. And because I am a science educator and a learning scientist, I want to focus on the advantages of these standards as I see them for students in Maine. 
For years, science curricula have been mired in the conflict between breadth versus depth and have separated content from the process of scientific inquiry. Scientific advances happen constantly, and there is simply no way for teachers to address all science content in a comprehensive manner. The NGSS offer the promise of three-dimensional learning, balancing core disciplinary ideas with cross-cutting concepts like stability and change, patterns, cause and effect, which can be seen across disciplines. The third dimension of the NGSS, scientific and engineering practices, is, in my estimation, one of the most important departures from prior standards. The inclusion of scientific and engineering practices operationalizes the process of scientific inquiry, and it necessitates a hands-on approach to science learning. Students are encouraged to ask scientific questions, analyze and interpret data, develop and use models, and engage in argument from evidence. In other words, the NGSS provide a framework for students to learn science content by engaging in inquiry like scientists do. At a time when Maine public schools are migrating to proficiency-based diplomas, the NGSS provides a coherent framework for assessing proficiency in science. I've spoken with teachers in several districts that have already adopted the NGSS and they're utilizing the scientific and engineering practices as a means to assess student proficiency. As a teacher, when I ask students to develop models of a complex system, explain and critique those models, and then revise them so they can be more so that they can more accurately represent the system under study, I'm encouraging my students to externalize their thinking in ways that allow me to assess both what they know and what they're able to do with that knowledge. In prior public forums, I've heard individuals argue that the NGSS are too complex for teachers to understand and work with. I've heard people argue uh, that simple standler, standards or simpler standards outlining content to be learned will provide a more straightforward path for teachers and students. I'd like to caution against such arguments um, as they deprofessionalize science teaching and effectively lower the bar of expectations for both teachers and for students. As a teacher, as a parent, and as a learning scientist, I believe in setting the bar high. I believe Maine students deserve that. The Department of Education at Bowdoin College, like other teacher preparation programs in Maine, has already integrated the NGSS in our methods courses. Our pre-service teachers are developing curriculum units and aligning lessons with the next generation science standards because we feel this is an important part of preparing teachers for the national job market and for engaging students in more authentic science learning. Finally, I would add that adopting the NGSS will allow educators and districts across Maine to share resources and teaching strategies with educators in other states. 19 states have already adopted the NGSS and universities and nonprofits have begun crafting curricular and professional development resources and making them available to educators. Several weeks ago, I was able to observe a group of teacher leaders from across our state engaging in one such professional development program aligned with the NGSS. Maine's teachers and school districts can benefit from these shared resources rather than investing precious time and money into developing curricular and professional development materials aligned exclusively to Maine's learning results. It is with all of this in mind that I encourage you to move forward by adopting the next gen science standards for Maine students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Flynn Ross, the University of Southern Maine. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I speak on my own behalf. I do not represent the USM or the UMaine system. I also strongly support the full adoption of the Next Gen Science Standards uh, for the forward-looking um, science-based practices and concept. We have adopted them for our uh, student teachers at the university. Um, they are so well described by Brooke Teller and Allison Miller. Um, I'd like to add to this conversation around the technology standards and encourage the Department of Ed to extend the technology standards to include digital citizenship, including a consumer-based cybersecurity awareness, um, computer networking, 
and coding aligned with career and technical education to support our workforce development um, in the area of um, computers. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Melissa Heffenecker. I'm here um, representing Noble Middle School um, Science Department from MI City 60 in Berwick. Um, and we, the Noble Middle School Science Department, feel that Maine should adopt the NGSS science standards. These standards combine the teaching of science skill and content through real, real world problems, global warming, renewable resources, uh, water pollution, the effects of drilling, making them more interesting and engaging to students in student-centered proficiency-based classrooms. The NGSS science standards relate content to practical application. They answer the age-old questions students are always asking, why do I need to know this? Making learning more valid and more meaningful and engaging to students. The NGSS science standards are mapped in a scope and sequence that flows nicely from concept to concept in a way that's easy for kids and teachers to understand. It helps with transitioning from one proficiency or standard to the next. This easily allows for vertical alignment within districts for classroom teachers, enabling them to pre-assess and remediate students when they're going from level to level um, in K through 12 proficiencies. NGSS science standards meet students where they're at developmentally with age and grade level appropriate concepts and learning targets. They're integrated, they engage kids in sciences from a variety of content, increasing student opportunity to make connections and to find areas of interest within the science curriculum. And lastly, and most importantly, we want the students in the state of Maine to have equal learning opportunities and access um, to the level of national rigor that the NGSS science standards provide. And uh, the best available teacher materials and texts are already aligned um, and adapted to NGSS science standards, and they're available for schools to use. So second that motion. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenny Buskin. I'm a student in the ETEP program. I'm becoming certified to teach 7 to 12 mathematics, but also hope to be certified to teach science in the upcoming year. Though I'd like to speak today mostly from a point um, of my background in special education and working with middle schoolers and high schoolers at a special purpose school. Um, I support the adaptation of these science standards. I think they offer more entry points, especially for students in special education. Um, to an engaging curriculum that prepares them with skills they need to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, my name is Bernadette Flynn. I'm the Director of Curriculum for the Sanford School Department. For the last three years, we've been providing ongoing professional development at the highest level to all of our teachers as it relates to next generation science standards. When we looked at the MLRs and we weighed them against the next generation science standards, there was no comparison. I think the strength of the standards, the depth of knowledge that children are gaining from the implementation of next generation science standards, um, is something that we cannot compete with locally as our state trying to create standards that will surpass what we have before us. I can tell you that science teachers in Sanford, I met with them yesterday and again today at the high school and at the middle school level, and they are 100% in favor of next generation science standards. We will continue to use next generation science standards and all of the materials and resources that we're purchasing at this time are aligned to the next generation science standards. My name is Adrian Hansen, and I'm an eighth grade science teacher at Scarborough Middle School. Um, I hold a BA in biology from Bowdoin College, and I earned my teaching certificate in secondary science through Bowdoin's Teacher um, Scholars Program. Thus far in my teaching career, I've taught students in both urban and rural areas in Maine, and it is my um, strong professional opinion that Maine adopt the next generation science standards. Scarborough Middle School has already adopted the standards um, to ensure that rigorous science standards guide our investigations. The next generation science standards are inquiry based. Um, they support scientific literacy in my classroom. And currently my students are engaged in a chemistry investigation where their driving question is, how does food provide my body with energy? During this investigation, my students will design and carry out their own experiments. And using wheatgrass, they'll learn about photosynthesis. When my students are engaged in science practices, they really rise to the occasion. Um, Inquiry-based science curriculum challenges my students to ask more articulate questions, um, to analyze authentic data with their peers, and to develop and communicate really for themselves models about the natural world. The performance expectations of the next generation science standards that weave together science practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts provide my students and I with clear learning goals to guide our inquiry-based investigations. The current main learning results in science really fail to provide rigorous expectations for students' performance of science practices. We really do our students a disservice in their pursuit of scientific literacy by lacking standards that are inquiry-based. The next generation science standards are those inquiry-based standards that provide comprehensive and comprehensible performance expectations that connect science content with practice. 
I'm a new educator and I can say that I focused my professional development on creating curriculum based on NGSS. I'm a better educator with the NGSS as a guide for creating inquiry-based curriculum and my students are stronger problem solvers because of this curriculum. The NGSS are evidence-based standards that I can trust, um, but they're also standards that provide me with autonomy to create curriculum that meets the needs of my students. So as a main educator and as a recent university student myself, considering a career in science and engineering, I can attest that the next generation science standards authentically engage students in scientific thinking. And I highly recommend that we adopt the next generation science standards as a guide to update the main learning results. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Ruth Kermish Allen. I'm the Executive Director for the Maine Math and Science Alliance, an organization committed to finding inspiring new ways to get people excited about science, technology, uh, engineering, and math so that our youth of today can become the innovators and the workforce of tomorrow. I've also been a high school science and math teacher um, five years before I entered into the nonprofit sector uh, in some of the state's most rural districts. And I'm also a school board member of the Appleton Village School and also a mother of a second grader and a fifth grader. And I've been talking to educators all throughout the state and administrators to really find out what do they want to see in the new version of the science standards. And I have to say, they are hungry for change. The last time the main learning results were put out, another thing was also put out at that same year, the very first version of the iPhone. So if you think about the changes that have happened in science and technology from, the, from when the very first iPhone came out and also our last main learning results version of standards came out, science standards came out, a lot has changed. So it's time for Maine to really get with the program and think futuristically about what's possible. Today's students need to see real world applications and the relevance of what they are learning in the classroom. Today's students need to do more than just listen and memorize and have content alone through memorization. Today's students need to, as we've been hearing throughout the day from the awesome teachers around the room, today's students need to do science. They need to in, have an interest in running experiments. They need to know how to do it. They want to see natural phenomenon and figure out how it happened through critical thinking and analysis. In summary, our teachers and students want to practice real science and to experience that thrill of wonder and discovery. Our standards should reflect that and should challenge teachers and students to do the work of scientists, not just learn about it, but actually explore, inquire, innovate, and iterate on their designs. They should support a child's innate desire to create innovative um, ideas and to ask intriguing questions about the world around them. These skills are extremely important to future employers of our children across the state. But more, so there are skills that will enable our kids to become active and engaged citizens as they truly tackle the wicked problems that they're going to encounter throughout their life. These topics that reach across scientific disciplines are extremely important as students begin to connect how an understanding of the concepts of energy and matter also relates to the concepts of cause and effect. Educators are ready. They are not afraid of a significant revision. 
In fact, 75% of our school districts across the state have already adopted some version of the next generation science standards. In talking with curriculum leaders across the state, as we've also heard already this morning, districts have spent thousands upon thousands, if not more, dollars um, already investing in adopting the next generation science standards, purchasing textbooks, and other resources that are aligned not with the main learning results, but with the next generation science standards. Maine is already moving forward, as we've heard, full force to realize the type of science education. But at this point in time, our assessments do not match those hands-on applied strategies in science. To ensure that our state standards raise all boats instead of a more dispersed and, and inequitable approach to high quality science education, our new state science standards need to challenge students to practice authentic science, plus our state assessments need to reflect this dynamic understanding of science so that classrooms spend time devoted to inspiring that next generation of innovators and the future STEM workforce of our state. I would like to highly recommend to the steering committee that they explore the adoption of the next generation science standards, the best that our country has to offer for tomorrow's youth and today's youth. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Katherine Keefe and I am a high school teacher at Westbrook High School. And I've taught both in Ellsworth, Maine and here in Westbrook over the last five years. When I first moved to Maine, Ellsworth was still in the process of using the Maine learning results. And I found that my classroom was based more on learning facts and covering information as opposed to actually doing science. And over the last five years, my classroom has transformed into a more hands-on inquiry-based problem-solving room. Uh, the thing about the main learning, or the thing about the next generation science standards that I absolutely love is the fact that it has that three-dimensional design with the cross-cutting conce concepts, the disciplinary core ideas, and the practices that have our students actually doing science and developing the skills that they are going to need to be science literate citizens in our world today, which is becoming increasingly important in the world that we live in. My students thrive in a hands-on inquiry-based environment where they are asked to analyze and communicate their, their findings clearly. I've watched my students dive deeper into science contact content because they've been asked to make connections between subjects and develop the scientific skills needed to be successful in college, workplace, and as informed citizens. Over the past five years, 
I and my colleagues have invested countless hours unpacking the next generation science standards, developing uh, cohesive units, rubrics, and standards that could be used towards our proficiency-based diplomas. Uh, moving forward, I can't imagine using anything else. Thank you. My name is Andrea Johnson. I am a science teacher at Bonnie Eagle High School, but I'm also an adjunct professor at the University of New England. And so I just want to note as an adjunct professor where I work with pre-service teachers, both elementary and secondary, all of my lesson plans that I, when I'm working with those students is designed around the NGSS. Um, as a science teacher at Bonnie Eagle High School, we have recently adopted the science and engineering practices of NextGen as our graduation standards for all of our students. So NGSS allows us to do science and adapt our lessons to student interests. My students are allowed the flexibility to explore standards in a variety of ways. My classroom of freshman students is full of young scientists engaged in curiosity and excitement. NGSS has influenced my teaching practices and has increased interest in students pursuing science and engineering careers. Um, I would recommend that Maine adapt the next generation science standards.
of six. No matter what. Based by social studies of six, correct? Social studies of six, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not one minute before. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 